hey guys what's up uh, in our last video we saw how to use tensorboard to visualize your data network and visualize the data from the network and uh, last time we found something like this I want to uh, take some time to organize this network so that we can uh, understand it more better and we want to uh, show few uh, things in our tensorboard and so that it will be very easy for us to work with the tensorboard okay so let's get started first thing let's talk about this uh, um, interface a little bit every time we create a run let's say it's currently running uh, let's stop this and and you can see there are only there are two names are showing here these are actually the uh, file names that we uh, created while running this program and for that current time stamp and it's giving you this well let's run this okay it's running you can see there will be another folder here with the current name okay it's odd it's supposed to be okay so we got another folder I don't care about the input now uh, let's see the tensor board just refresh a little bit the next year should come or reload in every 120 seconds let's refresh or let's refresh the entire page Uh, this happens sometimes it's irritating okay we got the third which is a different color now let's see this is the pre uh, the this one is our previous run and this is our run let's zoom it a little bit now let's say uh, we have a interface called smoothing so if we want to smooth the data let's say this data is already very clean data but sometimes what happens this error fluctuates very much so to understand it better we can smooth the uh, error if the uh, data is very noisy or very fluctuating then we can understand the mean or uh, what the mean of the data is actually going down or it's going up so we can smooth it a little bit and if we do this it will not be very good but usually 0.6 is a good value of a smooth data so now we can see pre in the previous previously uh, uh, when we run it it's the error was going something like this and this time it's going something it's falling uh, in at very early stage so at this point of time at 4000 K iteration it's already lower than the our previous run so that is one good and we can see this uh, steps in terms of uh, iterations this uh, or we can see this in terms of time so let's say these are the time means we can see you can see this it's just showing the steps and also showing the time and how much time it took from this to th from this time to this uh, you can see this the second one took larger time took more time to complete all the iteration and then the first one the previous run so there might be some CPU delay or something like that okay uh, now another thing we have is a useful thing is this one uh, split on underscore for for this uh, data we won't be we we are not seeing any differences here but let's say we have uh, error for uh, we are uh, we have a very complex uh, network which is producing three or four outputs th which has three or four output branches and we want to calculate uh, branch uh, errors of each branch then what we can do here is in the error instead of let's say we have multiple errors so we what we can do let's name it I'm just plotting the same thing again and again and error 2 and let's uh, let's create some false data and let's call it uh, something like that uh, mm, let's call it uh, learning rate lr i am just calling it uh, anything 
let's say we have some data which is called LR and we want to plot that also and it has two different uh, LRs in the network and we have two different errors in the network for just for this example actually there is no we are just plotting the same thing again and again but uh, let's try this and we will see the data in the Ashton subboard mm, okay done so let's refresh and this is the more so this is the one thing that I don't like about TensorBoot. We have to refresh it every time. Okay. Let's refresh it again. Okay. So now I don't want the other runs. Let's remove them. So we have this. Uh, this is from the previous first run that we created. So we have this error 1, error 2, LR1, LR2. But uh, see, it is there and the entire thing is blank here we can fit some data which is same uh, in the same category so what uh, and this is here and this one is here it's very difficult to see these things so what we can do these two are same category so that's why we named it underscore one underscore two so what we can do it if we use this uh, uh, this option you see we check this option split on underscore it will combine everything which has common prefix and it will combine in one category and put the graphs in them and LR is in another category so LR2 and LR1 in the same category it's plotting showing now it's very easy to see instead of going scrolling down and down so we can categorize them so while uh, writing the summary using this split character we can put uh, graphs in one category some graphs in other category and they will be clubbed together so that is one cool useful thing the same thing we did in the histograms if you can see if we don't have split then we have weight 1 and weight 2 if we use the split then we have weight 1 and weight 2 now let's add the run Okay, this run doesn't have anything so add the run so here again the colors colors are defining the runs this is for this run this color is for this run this is the later yellow is the latest one that we just run so this is for that so we have this for the weight one we have this for these are the distribution for the weight two these are the distribution you can see that each time we are running the uh, program the distribution is going some in different different uh, ways now let's uh, move into the graph that we want to another uh, before that just we can select which run we want to run let's select okay here we can see that we are plotting four graphs summary writing here this is also get uh, added in the last run so these are the you can set the last one here like this this is the first run that we created which is has one error and let's come to the last one now we have this uh, network now we want to organize this how we can do that we can actually we cannot do anything to this graph mm, to organize this we have to do it in our code so let's stop this first so this entire thing uh, excluding the target will be one block because this is uh, let's put it here so before that let's open this diagram again so I want to put this entire thing as one uh, layer and uh, this entire thing means this input along with this uh, weights or um, this input only as one uh, block and this weight connections and this uh, network uh, this uh, layer as another layer the entire thing we want to call it hidden layer and from this uh, connections and uh, till this output neuron neurons we call we want to call it as output layer so what we will do we will group them so let's group them and to do that we have an option in uh, tensorflow called scope so what we will do we will create a scope here and 
whatever we want to group together we will put it in one particular scope to open a scope we have to write it with with command with tf dot name scope and we have to whatever name we want to give to this group is input layer and let's follow the naming convention and give uh, underscore and all small or uh, let's have caps no issue but underscore and as that's it and everything we will put inside this scope so this will be our input and this part this entire thing will be our this plus this one we also want this one to be our this hidden layer and weights and hidden bars entire thing we want to put inside a uh, hidden layer uh, scope with tf dot name scope joy then layer as scope let's put let's put uh, be all this here and also the hidden layer neurons that we created here let's put it here so we have our hidden layer scope and let's create the output so for the output we need the output weights which is here let's put it in the same position here and with tf dot name scope output layer as scope and let's again indent it it will be inside the scope i it's uh, let's put it in the same line i guess okay let it be so now we have an output layer so let's run this and see how it looks okay so we have the data let's refresh and see this is the sixth run we have six run and when we refresh if it is refreshed correctly we should have uh, seven run okay we have seven run let's go to the seventh run so we have our input layer hidden layer output layer and we can see this this is uh, this is the layer and before that let's compare with our structure so we have input hidden output so we have input hidden output but still we can see this uh, gradient which we actually uh, i will explain it later but uh, we have all this we are, we are not interested in this uh, for now we only interested in the structure and these are actually the part of the optimization that we did here this cost and all this so we will do we want to remove them so what we are going to do we we will club them in another group called optimization uh, by the way this gradient is also in the part of this optimization uh, which comes in the atom optimizer so entire thing we want to put it in a um, optimization block uh, group with tf dot scope oh, sorry name scope optimizer or s i guess or whatever doesn't matter as scope and we will put everything in this so again let's run this again yeah i think it's done let's refresh and now by the time we should have uh, by this time we should have six eight yes and let's select the eighth one and now we have the same thing input hidden output 
so again we are not interested uh, in the optimization block currently we want to just check if our network is actually looking the way it is in the diagram or not so what we can do we can still we can do that we can right click on this remove from the graph so it will put that optimizer at the side and we can now focus on the output layer the optimizer is still there you can see that from here it is going to the optimizer from here it's going to the optimizer but this optimizer is not showing inside the graph now it's a side and it's, uh, it's showing using the arrows that it's still connected to the optimizer so now if we see if we uh, what we can do if we rotate this if you rotate this, this is the input, this is the hidden, this is the output. It's same looking like the same thing. Now we group them. What, what if we want to analyze them again by line by line that we did earlier video. So what we can, we can still do that. We can directly click here. So it will open up that block and we are able to see what is inside that block. So inside the input layer, we have the input bias, we have the input uh, inputs from the console or input from the whatever we are giving, passing the inputs and it is creating the input layer that's it and for the output uh, hidden layer hidden layer is a little bit more complex than this it is getting the tooth tensor and it is doing the matrix multiplication from the inputs and from uh, the hidden and adding the input bias again it's doing the from the hidden layer it's reading the hidden bias so it's doing the matrix multiplication of this one and this one and adding the hidden bias to get this one till this point this is this one we also have to supply the hidden bias which is this one so we have the hidden layer neurons and we have the hidden bias neurons here and it is supplied to the next layer and then the next layer the output layer you can see that we have the hidden neuron which is one neuron which is uh, one more thing that i want to show is we can also see the number of connections that we are passing here in this um, neuron we can see that there, are, there should be three connection to the output neuron and one connection from the bias neuron we can here see it's question mark which is actually basically the batch dimension which I have set as none so it, it can be anything depending on the input and for this is the connections that we are seeing that is three connections means the three uh, connections from each neuron we are going and one connection from the bias neuron now this three connection is going and it is connecting with the output weights uh, output weights so which are these one uh, these connections uh, are multiplying with the output weights and creating this uh, output neuron so when we are kind of, uh, multiplied this uh, neurons from the output matrix we got one single output and we added the bias with it we added the bias with that got the final output and again we got uh, we selected that uh, activation we this is the final layer for the output so this is the entire tensor flow i think i covered everything thank you guys for watching i hope this tensor board will help you a lot in your projects if this tutorial helped you please give us a thumbs up and please do like and, and subscribe here and i see you guys in the next video